Hello and good morning. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I just wanted to do a quick read of what is one of my favorite passages ever written that I have yet discovered in literature or philosophy or writing or just one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard from the words or the mind or the heart or the consciousness or the language of a thinker, of a fellow human being who understands what it is to be human. And one of the most important things about being human is not just family, but friends. And I don't mean that in a casual sense. I don't mean that in the American sense where you don't have friends generally, you have coworkers, you have relations of necessity and dependence, right? Just life as it is. I don't mean those kind of friends. I don't mean acquaintances. He means friends. I mean friends and he mean friends, meaning you'd have to actually do the work to understand. You'd actually have to listen. You'd actually have to not just project what you assume on other people, including your friends. So this is 14, the friend in Frederick Nietzsche's Thus Spake Zarathustra. One is always too many about me, thinkest the anchorite. Always wants one that maketh two in the long run. I and me are always too earnestly in conversation. How could it be endured if there were not a friend? Now, this almost gets into what he describes in Ecce Homo as a secondary consciousness arising in him. But specifically, he's saying he's his own best company. Most people are bad company for themselves, therefore bad company for others. He's saying, how could you even live without a friend? More so, how could you live without being a friend to yourself? So, going on. The friend of the anchorite is always the third one. The third one is the cork which preventeth the conversation of the two sinking into the depth. Basically, it's like the other party keeps the other, the deep, the shallow one keeps the deep one close to the surface and interrupts the thought process, interrupts your thinking, interrupts your feeling, interrupts your understanding, uh, right? Out of what? Out of their dependence, out of their need for comfort. Uh, association, all the things that people seek by being social animals. And then you realize, oh, the social game covers from the fact that, hey, I get it. Some people are cooler than others, but you know, at the end of the day, everyone's in it for themselves, right? What do they want? They want houses, cars, money, kids, right? Whatever, whatever their culture is selling, they want it because what's the point of a culture? Manufacturing goods in the modern day, right? Um, it does not mean the same thing it once did. Anyway, um, Ah, there are too many depths for all anchorites. Therefore do they long for such a friend and for his elevation. Our faith in others betrayeth wherein we would have faith in ourselves. Our longing for a friend is our betrayer, right? Why do you even have the need? What are you looking for? What do you think you're going to find in another human being that would complete you if you don't already feel complete enough yourself? Serious problem. Um, now imagine millions, hundreds of millions and billions of people like this. And often with our love, we want merely to overleap envy, right? We just, we, we want it as, a, as a, a power play, as a tool. And often we attack and make ourselves enemies to conceal that we are vulnerable, right? Right. Think of every animal in the animal kingdom, the moth with its eye spots, the praying mantis going into praying mantis mode to fight a bird that's much bigger than it, right? Everywhere in the animal kingdom, we just see basically what you could see is like a physical manifestation of what would become the ego in mankind the thought process of a individual being um moving on here be at least mine enemy thus speaketh the true reverence which does not venture to solicit friendship if one would have a friend then one must be willing to wage war for him and in order to wage war one must be capable of being an enemy right which would require require trust which would require knowing someone inside and out knowing that they can deal with the good and the bad and the harsh and the uh you know the vicissitudes the slings and arrows of life the ups and downs one ought still to honor the enemy in one's friend canst thou go nigh unto thy friend and not go over to him Meaning, you know, can you still be his friend and tell him what's what, uh, you know, not cater to his ego. If you realize he's stupid, he's wrong, he's fucking up, whatever it is, you know, that you don't just kiss ass. You don't just say whatever you say. Just be like, oh, sure. You don't just entertain him. You actually take him seriously. And one's friend, and, and this would also be with respect and reverence. And one's friends, one shall have one's best enemy. Thou shalt be closest unto him with thy heart when thou withstandeth him. 
right. It's not just, it's easy to be, you know, this world is filled with fair weather friends. You know, they're like strangers meeting in an inn for the night. Everyone cheers, they drink, they feel good for a moment, and then they go out back into the darkness never to see each other again. That's what a lot of people and meetings and conversations, that's just what a lot of the social world amounts to. At the end of the day, everyone goes home. At the end of the day, everyone's left with their self. Whether or not they have others like wife and kids, you're still left with yourself. There's no escape here. It's not about escaping reality. It's not about escaping the physical world. It's not about finding enlightenment or seeking escape in some back world. It's about being able to live in this world with yourself. Reading on, thou wouldst wear no raiment before thy friend. It is in honor of thy friend that thou showest thyself to him as thou art, but he wishes thee to the devil on that account. Right, so if you're honest about who and what you are, you will scare people because they will not be ready for it. The average person does not know what goes on inside other human beings. And honestly, they're not all too concerned to know, which is why they don't know. So he who maketh no secret of himself shocketh. So much reason have ye to fear nakedness. I, if ye were gods, ye could then be ashamed of clothing. Damn right. Thou canst not adorn thyself fine enough for thy friend, for thou shalt be unto him an arrow and a longing for the Superman. Basically he's saying you guys need acting lessons. You could stand to be better friends. You could act better. And that acting is the beginning of learning, right? That's what teaching and education and behavior is all about. Sawest thou ever thy friend asleep to know how he looketh? What is usually the countenance of thy friend? It is thine own countenance in a coarse and imperfect mirror. He's saying you're just seeing your own projections reflection um sawest thou ever thy friend asleep wert thou not dismayed at the friend looking so right the thought being oh i see i see what his problem is i could fix it i could help him you know bleh, right that kind of thinking every everyone who's had someone they care about or love in in trouble or with a problem i think they know this feeling i can see what their problem is why can't they see it maybe if i shake them they'll wake up <laughs> So, wert thou not dismayed at thy friend looking so? O my friend, man is something that hath to be surpassed. In divining and keeping silence shall the friend be a master. Not everything must thou wish to see, right? Let let some things be. Let, let, let them have their own process. You don't, honestly, most people just aren't that interesting to begin with. They don't go that far with their thought or their feeling. They live in a very narrow and larval-like realm of thought and feeling that's curated by other peoples and things is set to someone else's schedule in space and time, right? That's always been it. It's always kind of been slavery like that. And then I guess the whole modern conception is that um, the art needing people don't set the terms uh, the consumers do. So there's a reason why everything tends toward the lowest common denominator. Reading on, thy dream shall disclose unto thee what thy friend doth while when awake, saying you'll pick up on it. You'll, you'll see what they're up to. Uh, I think there's something more to it, but it eludes me at the moment. Let thy pity be a divining, to know first if thy friend wanteth pity. Perhaps he loveth in thee the unmoved eye and the look of eternity, right? Maybe he sees hope, right? Something beautiful that might last, something like that, perhaps. Let thy pity for thy friend be hid under a hard shell, right? Because pity doesn't do anyone any good. Nietzsche has a lot of criticism on Christianity and pity, and it, for good reason, because it's poisonous. It's poisonous and strong enough to kill a god after all you know that god died for his pity of man and then he choked on his own pity because he saw man for who he was this gets into i want to say almost like a, a kantian and hegelian dialectic and understanding um, of which so much of nietzsche's work kind of works from while criticizing and putting it in the past and as a relic of the past, you know, because it's crazy that someone like Nietzsche would say, you know, coming from a country like German, uh, coming from a country like Germany that produced the likes of Kant and Hegel and Schopenhauer, that, he, that Nietzsche could say something like, I'm the first German who actually ever learned how to think, right? Pretty bold. So thus will it have a delicacy and a sweetness, right? The hardness, right? Let thy pity for thy friend be hid under a hard shell. Thou, thou shalt bite out a tooth upon it. Thou will have it as a delicacy and sweetness, right? You're, you're working for it. You're working for it because things that are too easy don't last. Things that aren't are taken for granted don't last either. Art thou pure air and solitude and bread and medicine to thy friend, right? What's the point of a friend? If they drag you down, if they belittle you, if they attack you, if it's just, if they're just one more dumb ape in the competition and not really a friend, right? So are you bread and solitude and medicine? Many a one cannot loosen his own fetters. 
but is nevertheless his friend's emancipator. Yes, you don't need to be awake yourself to help others. If that was the case, humanity would have never got anywhere, uh, right? The whole thing would be a self-negation process. Life, will, species, none of that. It would be some inverse. Art thou a slave, then thou canst not be a friend. Art thou a tyrant, then thou cannot have friends. Far too long has there been a slave and a tyrant concealed in woman. One that on, on that account, woman is not yet capable of friendship. She knoweth only love. Right? And, and I've said it, that for all of history, the compromise was like woman was stuck with man. And in modern history, we see given the choice, she easily chooses herself. So there's a reason why she sought her escape. Um, you know, I know women get blamed for it, which is absurd. Um, in woman's love, there is injustice and blindness to all that she doth not love. Right. Understand that civilization is about women. It's about selection and deselection. This larger war of all against all. Well, the, the larger binding invisible force is the war of the sexes. And woman's whole province has been selection and deselection all along. Whether that served the species interest, that's a different matter that everyone could debate. But um, apparently 8 billion on the planet, they're not going anywhere. So the, the average types are doing well. So on that account, woman is not capable of friendship. She knoweth only love. In woman's love, okay, so that not even in woman's conscious love, there's still always surprise and lightning and night along with the light. Right, she's like a cat. One foot in, one foot out, and you better treat her right or she'll be gone. As yet, woman is not capable of friendship. Women are still cats and birds, or the best cows. <laughs> and yet, woman is not capable of friendship. But tell me, ye men, this is right in like, okay, he's judging women, but now let's look at men. Tell me, ye men, who of you are capable of friendship? Arguably, you'd have to be capable of friendship to be a man. So a lot of man, men are just bad friends. They're bad company for themselves. They make bad company for others. And apparently it's been like this for thousands and thousands of years, necessitating rules, laws, boundaries, cultures, right, to corral and control these people who are just off the chain, you know. Oh, your poverty, ye men, and your sordidness of soul. As much as you give to your friend, will I give even to my foe, and will not have become poorer thereby. Right? Everyone learns from Zarathustra. The common people, the dumb people, the tyrants, the slaves, everyone learns from Zarathustra. And it is true. The hunchbacks, the scholars, the cripples, the great men, the little men, everybody learns from him. So he's saying, hey, I have such an overflowing heart, I can give to everybody. You know, there's comradeship. May there be friendship. Thus spake Zarathustra. And later on, what he says about friendship is that you would have to be a sponge to be loved by overflowing hearts. You would have to work hard to actually understand a profound soul, to then receive what that profound soul has. But none of this addresses the fact that first you would need the, the, the very capacity, right? Look at any container, what's its carrying capacity? Look at any man, short, tall, weak, strong, right? What's his carrying capacity? A few pounds, a lot of pounds, right? A little weight, a lot of weight. Just putting it out there as such. So anyway, that was the friend in Nietzsche's Thus Spake Zarathustra. I gave a cursory look. Maybe somewhere down the line, I'll do a full and straight read through, including all the reference material, not reference material, but the fact that he has so many uh, thousands and thousands of years of Western literary canon buried in this um, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep reading chapters here and there and kind of just discussing them on the fly. Again, I'm Zach Markowski. Thanks for checking out the channel. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, get the notify button. And again, thanks for your time. And maybe I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.